So in this video, we're going to talk about how do we draw the lowest structure of, this is actually nitric acid, really strong acid uh, that you may see in the lab, right? So the first thing I want to do is, the first thing I'm going to do is write out my, 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 my atoms and how many of them I have each, right? And the idea is that I want to be able to calculate the total number of valence electrons we have, right? So from the periodic table, we should know by now that oxygen gives us six valence electrons. Nitrogen is worth five valence electrons and hydrogen is worth one valence electron, right? So if we add these up, essentially, right, we have three oxygen, each worth in six electrons per piece. So that means I have to multiply. So that means I have, right? So this gives me a total of 18 electrons. Right? I only have one nitrogen atom, so this only gives me five electron. And I have one hydrogen atom, so this only gives me one electron. Right? So, counting that out, well, this is 18 uh, plus essentially six. So, in total, I have 24 electrons total. Right? Now, Usually we say that an atom that's furthest to the left is your central atom. But remember, hydrogen can never be your central atom, right? It just won't ever be your central atom. So in this case, the next oxygen up would be your nitrogen. Now remember, and it should be intuitive, right? We have three oxygens. That means the oxygens have to be binded to something, right? So if we go ahead and put our nitrogen in the middle, right? Uh, remember, with John Lewis structures, it's usually, okay, well, a hit or miss, right? But you will get better as you go along, right? So essentially, because I have three ox uh, three oxygen, I'm actually going to surround my nitrogen with three oxygens. And here's the reason why. Anytime you see a hydrogen, it's usually branched off, right? Because it, 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 it can only form one bond. So the idea is that I'm going to build up my nitrogen to my oxygens and then put the hydrogen somewhere else, right? So at this point, I can only form, I'm going to move down and go up, right? So I'm not going to form a double bond. I'm not going to form a single bond. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not going to form a triple bond, but rather a single bond. And the reason why is that a single bond is only consists of two electrons. So that's the lowest amount of, uh, of electrons that I could put. So you always want to start low and then build up, right? So at this point, I can actually form single bonds between my nitrogen and my oxygens. Now remember, all we're saying here is that the nitrogen, uh, all we're saying here in a single bond is that one is coming from the nitrogen, one is coming from the oxygen, right? So therefore, single bond this consists of two electrons. Now at this point, we've only used two for six electrons out of the 24 that we have to place. So we still have about 18 more to go. Right now, this at this point, nitrogen's octet is not satisfied. Right, so I actually, so the only thing I'm going to do is actually form a double bond. So I'm going to form a double bond at this point in the nitrogen octet, and this becomes two, four, six, eight. So nitrogen's octet is satisfied. Now you might be wondering, okay, well, could not actually form, could not actually do it like this, where I have, let's say, my nitrogen, my oxygen, my oxygen my oxygen and I put a lone pair here, right? And the idea is absolutely, but you what you actually find is that at this point, you couldn't actually add any more bonds to the nitrogen, right? So I couldn't actually form an R group here where I need my hydrogen, right? Remember, there's a hydrogen formula, so it wouldn't work this way, right? Now, the nitrogen octet is satisfied. What about this oxygen, right? We already say that the nitrogen octet is satisfied, so we can't put any more electrons on the nitrogen. So the only other place we have to put Electrons, well, if that is satisfying this oxygen octet, is actually in a pair of lone pairs. Right? So in this case, it becomes two, four, six, eight. Right? Now, what about this oxygen? Right? It only has two electrons around it. We can't put any more electrons on the nitrogen. Right? So the only other way I have to put the only other form of electrons I could actually put on this oxygen would be in the form of lone pairs. So because we have two, we need eight. So that means I had three pairs of lone pairs, which equals, which equates to six electrons. Now remember that we have a hydrogen formula, right? So based on your intuition, uh, 
but hydrogen is going to be bonded to one of these oxygen. Now, which one? Uh, we already said that we satisfied this oxygen's octet rule. This is satisfied, but most likely it's going to be this, right? So there's our single bond between the hydrogen and the oxygen. Again, one from the hydrogen and one from the oxygen, a single bond. Now, at this point, the oxygen only has four electrons total around it. We need it to satisfy the octet rule, so this becomes two, four, right? So we need four more electrons around it, right, to get eight. But remember, hydrogen can, can't accept any more bond, and nitrogen cannot 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 accept any more bond, right? Because, again, its octet is full, right? So the only other way we could put electrons on this oxygen is in the form of lone pairs. And because we only have four, we need two pairs of lone pairs, which equate to four electrons total, right? So essentially, I'm adding two, four, which is four, and two, four, which is four. So four plus four is eight. So this oxygen is satisfied. Now, the only other thing you want to do now is check to see if we've actually matched our 24 electrons, right? If this number, if, if the number of count you get is above or below, that means we did something wrong. So this is the importance of calculating the number of electrons prior. All right, so this becomes 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. So we know that this is a plausible way structure for the molecule. Now, quickly, even though the video is not about formal charges, you should recognize by now that this is actually a negative charge, and my oxygen and my nitrogen is actually positively charged in the formula.